Well, then I will call the meeting to order at 6.02, uh, seeing that we do have a quorum. Hopefully the rest will join, though. Okay. Uh, great. Is there any... Uh, there's Cynthia. Great. I just called the meeting to order. So welcome. Okay. Is there any adjustments to the agenda? 6.5 would be a solar, the solar array. Sure. Like an update. 6.5 solar array update. Okay, great. Is that it? Okay. We'll move on to, to the consent agenda. Uh, looking for a motion to approve the minutes from Monday, December 4th, regular meeting. So move. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Great. No discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? I didn't think I heard Justine. Okay. So moved. All right. Um, number four, public comment. Do we have any public on at this time? Okay. Uh, board comment? Yes. Uh, just a note. Uh, I did finally get the array of sensors installed at the high school, uh, and they were working. However, the, um, one of the hubs has stopped working. I have to go investigate it. Um, it was uh, reporting normal temperatures in the 60s. However, I did note a couple of classrooms that were in the 70s, mm -hmm. mid-70s. Oh. So even though their thermo the thermostat in those rooms was set lower. So I'm not sure who I should report to on that. If you let Lyle know, he'll reach out with yeah. okay. Julie. We'll have to get, it, it'll, it'll be uh, the nomadic folks that we use. Right. So, okay, and I'm I'm thinking that there's a few more rooms that I probably should put more sent buy some more sensors and put them in. So, but we have it in most all the identified rooms. I can't yeah. think of the group we've used for our nomadic building. <laughs> we don't have a lot of nomadics anymore, but we have had. And uh, do you remember who they were? I. Uh, not there's not many people in the state who can. No, this no, it's, it's, it's a father son team. Right. It is. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Lyle makes the call, and right. then we just make sure someone's there to okay. let them I'll share it. usually. I'll and share I can text them. him in the morning, too. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, um, I'll, one, get the, the rest of the sensors back up and running, and then I'll um, uh, make a report on what ones Perfect. are high. And when you do copy me on the email, I'll text him so sure. it makes certain he reads it. Okay. Okay, great. Um, I was going to comment uh, that tomorrow night there was going to be a... Um, uh, uh, planning uh, the community education campaign, uh, the re, re, um, repurposing, repurposing uh, we're, we're going to do a planning, um, like an education campaign for the um, high school acquisition vote, but it has been canceled due to weather, but it's definitely um, something that would probably be good to keep on our radar to help um, help with with their campaign to educate uh, the community to um, for this high school acquisition vote. When you have a rescheduled date, will you share it with me so we can send it home to families? Absolutely. Too? That's a great idea. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, is there any more board comment? Okay, moving on to discussion 6.1, uh, 2223 audit update. I think that would be Tara, probably. <laughs> I'll get started and then Lindy and Jamie can join in. Okay. Uh, so, this draft of your audit, we have reconciled tuition. So, there has been some adjustments made to your Tuition line items within the budget. I was wondering about that. Um, okay, great. I'll let Lindy speak to um, the FTE changes Tara. that she went over. Um, Tara, Tara. Yep. You're talking about the budget. We're talking about the audit. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I was like, oh, okay. I know about the I said, you're right to budget. <laughs> Oh, you're good. You're I was just, like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, okay, Sorry. well, if that I mean, changed our tuition, uh, great. <laughs> audit, she right said on it too. Our but. auditors were working through our first draft of financial statements. Um, they had a bit of a delay <laughs> getting things done. Um, their staff went out for multiple weeks with COVID, then they got called into a peer review, so it put them behind. But they are working on them this week, and we should see draft financials very soon. Excellent. And Bill joins us. He's muted. Oh, there's Bill. All right, welcome. We were just we we're just on six point one, the audit update that uh, Tara just uh, gave to us. Uh, if there's, is there any questions um, on her update? Uh, my question is. With all of the with this delay, does the the company still feels that they, you know, are on track for? Um, the, the, this is not going to majorly hinder the time frame at all. Okay, good, no. good. No. Well, that's great. Okay, is there any other questions uh, regarding the audit update? Okay, great. Let's move on to the twenty four twenty five budget draft. Okay, so as I already said, this draft of your budget, we've reconciled tuition. So you'll see some adjustments made to your tuition expenses. We are still utilizing a 10% increase in the fiscal year 24 announced tuition rate because we don't have FY25 announced tuition rates yet. Um, those are due into the state and to um, notified by business managers to other business managers by the 16th because the 15th is a holiday this year. So I will expect to start seeing those trickle in um, this week and then um, early next week I'll have the announced tuition rates. So that adjustment has been made. And then as I said, I'll let Lindy speak to her FTE changes. So the tuition um, that the, the tuitions, high schools also have to set their tuition rate right now as well, even, the, even before their budget is done. Is that correct? Just like we have to set our elementary tuition rate. All schools in the state of Vermont, public schools and um, independent schools that are designated schools have to file by statute. So, so they may not be finished with their budget cycle yet, but they have to uh, decide what they're going to charge. Yeah, they have to announce. Yep. Okay. Well, that's great. I, I noticed that that uh, gave us a good reduction. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. We're over here. So, in terms of regular ed, maybe. Uh, before we go into the change, yeah. let's talk about the why a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, so in this draft, Tara's going to lead you through the revenue sheet. We'll lead lead, lead you through the tax sheet as well tonight. Um, so, what I want you to know is we came at this current draft of the budget, um, looking to do some reductions from last month for two reasons. One, we were trying to get under our per pupil spending to possibly get under the ten percent cap. What we've recognized within working through those parameters, as you once you get to the tax sheet, you're going to see we're actually under a 5% tax rate increase on your equalized tax rate. So the cap, that 10% 10 per, that 10 cap isn't allowing us to, it, we're not gaining anything from it, is what I'm saying to you. So we're over 10% mm -hmm. with our pupil spending. And we'll show you why our our, our long-term weighted pupils um, from last year to this year, even though we have a what I would say is one of the lower increases in the expenditure budget, um, you'll see that our per pupil spending still, because we didn't gain enough pupils from one year to the next, is still over 10%. Um, even though our, our overall expenditure budget's only up uh, 3.24. And the cap is related to the equalized that would pupil. that would the cap is related to the equalized tax rate, which we'll okay. show you. Okay. Your equalized tax rate is actually less than five percent. Less than five. So okay. we wouldn't benefit from being under that ten percent cap. Like it's not holding our tax rate steady. Where our tax rate 
for our sense actually under the 5%. Okay. And we'll show that all to you on the tax sheet here in a minute. Okay. I just wanted you to know though about one of the reasons why we were looking to reduce costs. Mm -hmm. Now, what has come out since we finalized this draft of the budget is a pretty significant um, hit to the CLAs. Mm -hmm. The CLAs in both towns decreased once again. But this year, remember last year in Stockbridge, we saw an over double digit decrease. Is this time in Rochester, you're gonna see when we get to it um, of a 13% decrease in the CLA. So when we get to your overall tax rate, the CLAs are once again, um, driving that number quite a bit. And so one of the things we're gonna need direction on from the board is, is that we already have a budget as, as when Lindy goes through the, the the current changes from last month to this month personnel wise, that's already um, at a place where us trying to do deeper cuts would start to really hurt programming even further. Yeah. And you're gonna see we've already suggested in this budget um, cutting world language, which the board needs to talk about. And again, I just wanted to give you the why around this. The why was originally looking at that 10% cap, which I don't recommend that we even look to try to get under because we're not going to benefit from it. Um, and then two, so we'll just pay the full tax, which is under 5%. So that's good. We don't have to go in front of the board. Um, the, and remember by board, I mean, it's this panel that the Secretary of Ed um, has to impanel three superintendents, three business managers. They make a recommendation based on criteria to the Secretary of Ed, whether or not our spending um, is reasonable and allowable above the 10% threshold. Um, every, that's every budget that is above, above this 10%. year is yeah. gonna need to do that. Yes. Wow. Um, and so that was the, the reason <laughs> to try to possibly get under that 10%. I don't, yeah. we're not gaining tax wise by it. Yeah. Because we're under the 5% cap on the tax rate when we get to it. So I don't think it, it I don't think it makes sense to then try to to get under the ten percent cap because that ten percent cap the whole reason to do it is to cap your taxes at five percent and our equalized tax rate is already under five percent. Okay. Um, so there's that piece, and then what we'll be looking at from the board is based on you know this pretty significant drop in the CLA in Rochester specifically. Um, you're going to see there, there's quite a tax hit in this current budget, even though we've really tried to control expenditures. Um, and so I just wanted to give that kind of like background on how, why we went about it this way over break. Um, Lindy will talk to you about the changes we've made. Um, and then Tara can go over the revenue sheet. Um, and then we'll go through the tax sheet and then we'll be looking for some direction from the board about how folks are feeling about this current draft and where they might want us to go next. Okay. Yeah, so if we start on page one, one of the um, changes we shifted with some of our intervention. So I think it says literacy here, but I think we mean math, Sarah, for 0.6. We um, dropped our math intervention to 0.6, which uh, FTE, which Please me believe we can still provide high quality intervention three days a week for all our students that need that. Um, what was this point six then on our last literacy here? What was that point six? Or to say literacy. That's an instructor okay. that teaches because we split out four to six uh, as content special okay. teachers. So instead of a full-time classroom teacher in Stockbridge, it's someone who's point six. And is that now in this regular? Yeah. Point eight, 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 eight. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, and we did all, so, and then it balances us out um, at literacy intervention, uh, interventionist total or point at 2.0. So it gives us um, literacy intervention we have going in both buildings and just a reduction in our math intervention. What was it before? Uh, it was. It was like 2.8 because Don has part time so. for all the interventions, right? Right, okay. so, so we now essentially, though, it's uh, this is 2.6, right? Like, talk about so it is way. reduced, yeah. yeah. Okay, right. Um, it still keeps our classroom instruction numbers the same, um, 
and we are still carrying um, teacher that a we teacher have. that in that budget that we had every intent to hire this year, we but not. we we haven't been able to hire. Um, and we're still budgeting for a classroom teacher. We would yeah. like to have a classroom yeah. teacher. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then if we go to page two, under world language, like Jamie mentioned, that was one of the areas that we did remove. Kylie added the budget. And that was that. That's page. an area too, once the board sees the whole tax sheet and everything though, okay. that the, you could give us direction to add it back. Yeah. Um, so just know we removed it for this draft, trying to get up originated to do with CLA and under the 10% cap, but that is an area where the board could give us direction. Right, because uh, it was proposed, the previous draft was 40,000, 40, 40, yep. and yeah. so that's a re reduction. It is. Okay. okay. Then if we go to uh, point, uh, I believe it's page, yeah, page four. Um, school nurse, this is based on data of nurse, actual nurse visits. <laughs> um, we did reduce the school nurse down from five days a week to four days a week to 0.8. Page one. Page four. Right, and that's one, that's um, one nurse that does both right. buildings, is that correct? Correct. And do we currently have a nurse hired? We have a long-term sub in. Long-term yes. sub right now, okay. Who doesn't, we'll need to hire for next year. Right, yes, okay. And if you remember, you did not have a 1.0 nurse. We did not. I prior to COVID. Right. That's one of the things we leverage semester funds That's for. Right. Yeah. So. Just kind of going back to that yeah. normal. Well, right. we hated before. Yep. Okay. Yeah, based on who actually goes to the nurse. <laughs> okay. Right, the amount of visits. Right. Okay. Um, and I believe those were the big. Your, the SU budget was approved, so you'll see some of your SU adjust, assessments have adjusted based on the approved supervisory union budget and based on just your percentage of the assessment. So you'll see in some areas the SU assessment has dropped. Yep. And then on page seven, we did uh, remove the high school fuel oil out of the budget. That was the other big thing, big change from the draft to draft. <laughs> and just so the board knows in regards to the high school fuel oil, um, I've been in conversation with um, Vic and Catherine um, about this. And I have a meeting with Vic and Catherine from the repurposing committee on Wednesday to just review updates and make certain we're all where we need to be in regards to this upcoming uh, vote this spring um, for the town of Rochester to acquire the high school. And one of the things that they've been um, focused on and what the town wants to see is uh, for, for them and us to be able to really specifically spell out for the town of Rochester, like, yes, you may be acquiring a building and there could be some costs associated with that, but you'll also see that the RSUD budget adjust based on those costs changing over to Rochester. So they were happy for us to really spell out what those changes would look like and wanted us to budget okay. accordingly. That yeah. makes sense, okay. Okay, great. So those were the major changes we didn't really, and then like Tara said, we reconciled tuition. And uh, just so the board knows, we also did keep in, in this current draft, the fund transfer to the capital fund the capital improvement fund remained. Mm -hmm. So just a reminder, that's a $65,000 value uh, that we were able to keep in this current draft, which was good. Um, okay. I had a specific question about the library salary that was a difference in budget. Yep, that is on page four. Page four, yeah. Um, uh, was there a reduction 
in the library uh, just to, based on actual personnel who will be filling that position. who we actually hired okay so that's why it changed okay yeah so it, it dropped from 52 to 32 it seems like that yeah and, and as well as open enrollment and insurance and things of that nature right is all of this included yeah. okay so that's that is that personnel is currently hired that's the right, right for that role yep okay that was reconciled essentially yes. in this draft Okay. Um, all right. Um, okay. As, uh, does, is there any further question? Do you want to go through it all do first? It all, okay, let's do it all first. All right. Unless there's specific questions like that. Yeah. I. I well. I, yeah. There's no. Okay, uh, we'll move uh, on to the revenue. I'm sorry, Amy? Yes. Yeah, hi. Um, a lot of numbers about we've got big decisions and impacts going forward. The one concern I would have is um, we want to be competitive with all our neighboring elementary schools and to attract students and retain parents and students. And I think that the cut of a $11,000 for rural languages, I just quickly running the numbers and it's like a half a cent impact on our it tax. Was, it was more than that the last draft bill. So that it's only 11,000 budget to budget, but what we had proposed last month was actually a 0.5 rural language. Which was a total of point eight seven four language at the last one. Right. And forty five thousand. So it's about a penny. It's just over a penny. And I and I would advise that we go through all of it, Bill, and then that would be one of the big things you guys talk to us about in regards to programming, once we can walk all the board members through the tax sheet so they know what that position would equate to on the tax sheet. Yeah. I, I, my point is that I think it's worth keeping that 11,000 in there, if not adding back in some of that money to the 45,000. I don't think we should go to zero on rural languages if we're going to be a rural class elementary school. That's that's my point. No, no, I, I hear that. We'll definitely circle back to that once we get through then. Thank you, Bill, for that comment. Uh, we'll definitely come back to that. Okay. Terry, you want to go over the revenue? So in this draft of the revenue budget, the changes that were made is we've added $50,000 of prior year surplus, um, which we had $0 in there in your last draft. We've adjusted the tuition based on the reconciliation. We're still using the FY24 rate. Um, when you set your 25 rate, that adjustment will be made for your next draft. Um, and then I've adjusted, if you go down to the tech tuition on behalf, that's been adjusted to match the expense, which is based on the fiscal year 25's rate. And then the Act 60 related transportation, I've adjusted that based on your fiscal year 23 contract, which is what is the base contract that that 40% is calculated on. So those are the only changes that have been made on the revenue sheet at this point. We haven't put in as much as we've seen historically in the prior year surplus. Um, you know, Jamie and I have spoke about this a lot that, um, you know, we're really trying to recommend boards not to utilize that because then in the event as we're making these budgets, expenditure budgets tighter and tighter, we may not have those types of surpluses moving forward. So we are potentially setting ourselves up for any type of deficit for whatever we're using for offsetting revenue from prior year surplus. So we're just being really cognizant of that, um, particularly in this fiscal year for our districts throughout the SU. What is our current um, fund balance for FY23? I know it's not audited yet, but. Yep, I don't have the unassigned fund balance. Projected surplus in 23 was 210. So, um, 
Hear me, it's okay. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, so, Tara, what we're saying in the, the revenue budget is right now we're budgeting zero. That doesn't mean that we don't have a surplus. We, we're like, budgeting we're fifty thousand in this in this budget. The last draft we had zero as prior year surplus. Oh, okay. I, I didn't see the. I'm sorry, the, the last draft. So the current draft is fifty k, and but that maybe more and what i hear you recommending and, and jamie recommending is that we don't use it all because we might need it down the road as budgets get tighter 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 is that correct it just yes if you don't have these types of surpluses year after year as we start really tightening these budgets then you're setting yourself up for a revenue deficit yeah Thank you. but but with the surplus it either has to go back into the budget or we need to put it into a the, a, a, a fund into a a, into a reserve yeah. fund so that's yeah. is going to kind of be our two choices correct okay and and you're projecting right now it's at at 210 you had a 210,000 dollar projected surplus in fiscal year 23 Right, and this, that's the one we're talking about. That's the yeah. one you would take the 50. Out. Okay, so I just want to make sure I'm understanding. Yeah, so you okay. have to go the prior year to yeah. what your active year is. Okay, <laughs> so we we do have some room there to discuss that further. Um, I think that is a, yeah, okay. Tax sheet? Yep. So on your tax sheet, we'll start in the upper left. I'll go through it just like we normally do. Your budgeted expenditures are $4,830,913. We offset your revenue, which is the local revenue, revenue not collected by the Ed Fund, $613,572. Your Act 68 education spending comes to $4,217,341. We divide that by your long-term weighted average, which current draft version five that was released today matches version four for our SUD, which is 331.07. That gives us an education spending per pupil cost of $12,738.52. We then divide that by the yield of $9,452. And that gives us our equalized residential tax rate of 1.3477. If you go over to the yellow box on the right hand side, you'll see your FY25 versus FY24 equalized tax rate is an increase of 0 0.0302 cents, which equates to 2.29%. The next two line items is that 10% threshold that we're monitoring that Jamie was talking about. Your fiscal year 24 per pupil with using the long-term rated average versus the equalized pupil was 11,306.14. This revised equalized pupil of 12,738.52 gives us an increase of 12.67%. Those numbers you just read us is you took uh, the current new weighted system um, and, and apply it and calculated it for the current budget that we're in. Yes, the Agency of Education provided those factors to us to utilize for this comparison. Perfect, that's great. We're then gonna move to the Rochester box, which is on your left. So you'll see the fiscal year CLA was 87.01%, and you can see that the fiscal year 25 CLA is 73.80%, a reduction of 13.21. So what we do here is we take your FY25 equalized tax rate, that 1.3477, and we divide that by the CLA, and it gives us a projected homestead tax rate of 1.8262, which would result in an increase of 31.2 cents in Rochester. That equates to $311.96 per $100,000 of property value. In the Stockbridge box, You'll see the CLA went from 75.98% to 67.85%, a reduction of 8.13. So again, we take that fiscal year 25 equalized tax rate of 1.3477, and you divide that by the CLA of 67.85%, and that gives you a projected homestead tax rate for Stockbridge of 1.9863 
that equates to a 25.23 cent increase, which is $252.30 per $100,000 of property value. Okay. okay. Fun stuff. So j just to jump in before the board starts talking, I mean, we did, uh, Bill, you had this question. So our equalized pupils, I just want to make certain the board can see it in that top left-hand corner on the box. You'll see the equalized pupils for FY24 was 180.84. Through the new long-term weighted algorithm in weights, that's where we get up. Last year would have been at 325.43. Do you see that? That shows you the FY24. Tara has it right under. Mm -hmm. So when you were asking, are we using the new weights? We are. And that's how you get. we got our long-term... Our FY24 per pupil long-term weighted average spending. That was based off of last year's budget. That's where that 11000 came from, 110614 Correct. And so we gained, <laughs> essentially, with this new metric, about six students this year. Okay? And that's what our expenditure budget was run through this year. So when you hear us talking about 10% cap, we are over the 10% cap from FY24 to FY25. I am saying I'm comfortable with that because that number right above it, that 2.29%, we're actually under the 5% cap for tax rates. That's why I'm saying we don't need to bother ourselves as much with trying to get under that 10% threshold because we're not benefiting from the 5% cap because our tax rate's actually less than 5%. It's going up less than 5%. The problem is the CLA has dropped so much, you're seeing that your tax rates are up, respectively, 20.6% in Rochester and 14.55% in Stockbridge. And there's nothing we can do with the equalized tax rate that's going to drop that unless we continue to cut from your current budget. A penny equates, a penny is 31292 and 74 cents. Tara has that bracketed there. Okay, for so for to change our tax rate by a penny, we have to Cut. decrease 31,000. Or increase revenue. Or increase revenue by that amount. Yes. Well, that is nice to have that mechanism to see how much we would actually have to change to make a drastic effect. Um, we all know that the Governor has been telling, uh, has been saying that there's a 17 percent tax increase in the state of Vermont, and unfortunately, this is where it is. Well, the CLA is impacting yeah. many of our districts greatly. And just, <laughs> just to Tara, does anyone else have any questions for Tara before I send her to uh, Jihad, and then I'll join you, Tara, in a little bit. No, I guess not. If we do, we can write them down or... or and She'll be back tonight, And, and too. we'll, we'll get, catch you on the re rebound. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, we got it. Thank you. Great, great explaining. Um, so re just to remind folks, especially for our new board members, the common level of appraisal is what the state uses in regards to ensuring that folks are all paying their fair uh, share of taxes based on what properties are assessed at mm -hmm. versus what they're actually selling for. So the common level of appraisal drops if properties are selling at a higher rate than what properties within that town have been assessed for. So if I have a $200,000 assessed home and I sell it for $350,000, then what the state is saying is like, whoa, that's a flag of, you know, Jamie and Callis should be paying, their, their CLA should drop to ensure that they're paying their fair share of tax into the statewide ed fund because properties are actually valued higher than what they're currently assessed at. And that's what this mechanism is used for across the state. It's also to ensure that uh, towns within the state aren't arbitrarily assessing property values lower since this is a statewide tax 
in regards to property fat values funding the ed fund that's another thing that it makes certain it's taken care of not just have properties been reassessed lately it's also also to ensure that when properties are assessed that they're accurately assessed for market value and not um, possibly assessed too low robert uh i might also point out uh, along that subject is is these um, low CLAs are triggering a reassessment, yes. which will take place in, well, we won't see the results of it in our tax rates for two years. So, but. Is my tester scheduled for a reassessment? Yes. There. Great. I don't know about Stockbridge. Stockbridge is in a unique position because they had theirs done at the beginning of COVID. 2020. So right. they're appealing for a statistical um appraisal first to help mm -hmm. recover some of that because it hasn't been five years. So, um, and I think you stated this before, that <coughs> to do any more reduction made in, to make any main major impact would if really affect our programming. It would really affect Correct. the kids' education. Yeah, I mean, in a way we already have, right? We eliminate world language. But right. Yeah, but deeper I, cuts would result in further programming. Right. I, I guess that's what I'm asking is you yeah. feel like like this budget you could still you could still run a the school yes. at the capacity that it's at. Um Yeah. Yeah. And you you've you but you have as well tried to pare it down to to be more efficient as you as we could. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I will say, like, it is a real kudos to Lindy thinking outside the box and how best to, to leverage resources for you guys as a district. I mean, this is the overall expenditure budget in this proposed draft of Rochester Stockbridge is that your expenditure budget is down the least. Now, reconciling tuitions, like, we're, we're having a year where we're in good shape, right? Like, I've got one district where tuitions, a bunch of families moved in, and they all are tuitions up four hundred and fifty thousand alone. Wow! Right. So, um, you know, the fact that we were able to keep our tuitions in a decent spot, I think, is really helping us right now. Otherwise, I don't think we'd be seeing and that an being overall expenditure said, budget. Where I would. It is. We've talked about some of the surplus funds going into a tuition reserve. Yes. To yeah, help we're not carrying. Our... Um, a We're bunch of extra interest. students in this. This 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 budget is what you have. So if. either we need to add some students to the tuition pool if we didn't go to a tuition reserve fund, mm -hmm. in, uh, funding it um, with the reserve money, um, or we should be looking to put some of those surplus funds into a tuition reserve. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I guess I'd like to circle back to specific expenditure, um, the budget questions, comments, specifically maybe around the um, um, world languages. Um, and I, I hear what you're saying, Bill. Um, if we were to put, if we were to put some money back in you're saying like 11,000 back in um that would be to pay for like stipend type to to kind of do artist in residence type maybe language person coming in um I mean, we originally tried to increase it this last draft yeah, because we've try. been struggling to hire right it's been our, our challenge right so you know what we've been carrying is essentially about a day a week Mm -hmm. And um, we'd look to try to share that possibly with a neighboring district. Like right now, just so the board gets some awareness, we have a vacancies in world language at Bethel, Rochester, Stockbridge, and in Sharon. Uh, well over a 1.0. The key is trying to figure out how do we pair those FTEs together so a 1.0 could actually be like desirable and manageable. Um, so one of the thoughts we have was possibly trying to pair a 1.0 between Bethel, Rochester, Stockbridge to make it whole so someone could get full benefits and, and possibly we could recruit that <coughs> way. Um, you know, right now Bethel, just so the board knows in, in your mind, they're budgeting at a 0.6 currently right now. 
So if we wanted to try to offer a 1.0 share between the three buildings, that we would need to budget about a 0.4 here, which would be a little more than a, that 11, about double. Or, you know, we could advertise for a 0.8 and try to just do 0.2. Yeah, there's other ways we could go about this. I wanted to really get into this conversation tonight to kind of get some direction. Absolutely. Robert? So, but, I mean, last year you weren't able to to hire. I mean, there's... Correct. And are there people out there who... I mean, it's difficult when you're splitting between campuses. I mean, how many total students are you talking about? I mean, for it's a, a difficult... No, it, it, it's not an easy... It's, yeah, it's not an easy yeah. recruit. I, I, I think this statistic from our last world language was... Um, she, it was a slightly different configuration, but she saw 450 students every week, and it's difficult to build relationships on that. So I'm not sure how practical right. it is to, to hire under that circumstance. The, um, I mean, one of the things we could look at, to Amy, is are we looking to, we've talked about these ideas of different times throughout the year, around offering experiential learning right. and more opportunities for some intensives. And I wonder around world language, is there an opportunity to budget possibly to bring some folks in? Like you would think about an artist in residence. Like yeah, is there a way yeah. that we could try to engage st students around world language that way? Um, so that could be possibly an avenue we pursue too. Bill? No, thanks. A question for Jamie, and then I've got a comment. The question for Jamie is, I like the idea of, of one reason we're having trouble recruiting is that we don't have a full-time position with benefits and it makes a big difference. It seems to me, I know something about benefits that if it's part-time and no benefits versus full-time with benefits, uh, that really strengthens our hand in the, the, the job market. So if Bethel's got 0. 0.6, what would, what would our 0. 0.4 cost us in our budget? It actually would be, we were budgeting last year at um, a point two, so you would double from the last year budget. So about 20,000. So we'd need uh, another partner, another maybe Sharon, and we could go three, three, four? I would recommend against that, um, just because we've tried that, and it's what Robert was discussing. We did try partnering. Yep. Apple, our son, and Sharon, and uh, the person was wonderful. But I would say what we were asking them to do was not sustainable. Too much. Yeah, it's a lot. And Robert was just commenting yeah. that uh, the teacher saw 400 kids, uh, different kids in one week. So it was very hard to build that relationship with them. Um, I do really like this idea of um, an intense, mm -hmm. intensive, you know, there are like what resident. I did with this firm's got talent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I think it exposes the kids to language, exposes them to yeah. something different, um, and and because they're just you, we know in all the districts we've been trying to hire, and it's that teacher just really isn't out. There. <laughs> right. It also allows us some flexibility, frankly, in how we pursue world language, uh, and that we're not limiting our candidate pool based on folks worrying about licensing. Um, right. because the provisions around us being able to get folks in front of students for that intensive period, we could do via the current license, the regulations around licensing. Right. My, my comment uh, is that it goes back to Justine, not to misquote you, Justine, if you've, if I say something wrong, but Justine's been very strong and, and I totally agree with her that we need to have the best around. We need to be able to promote why we are special so that we can attract students and keep students. And every students we attract, the marginal cost versus the average cost is, is less than the average. And every student we can retain rather than lose, we're not paying that tuition, which we're budgeting a 10% increase for. So I guess I think world ed is important. I'm not suggesting I know how to do it, but I'd like to request that the board consider that we ask our superintendent and our principal to figure out a way, maybe in the, the tune of, of $20,000 to, to, to make 
uh, a meaningful world language experience here in our Artisud campuses. Um, the other thing is that I'm not sure that cutting is going to help us get over the top. We've got a very responsible budget of 3.8% increase in our expenditures. And when we factor in the additional gains we made with the, the now new and fairer weighing system, the budget increase is, le is, is less than 2.3%. So to me, the difference is the CLA. And that CLA, we need to be articulated what it is, what the impact will be, why it exists. And I'm not sure we want to go to war with it, but we want the our taxpayers to understand what's what's going on. One thing I don't, I could be wrong, Jamie, but one reason we have a CLA is so that we can have income sensitivity credits for those taxpayers, families that are making ninety thousand dollars or less. Uh, they can't do that unless the towns all keep their assessments up to market value. So we've got something there that's very valuable because in our communities, over two thirds of our communities pay by their income rather than by their property assessments. <laughs> property assessments are going up sooner or later. We're seeing that, um, but the CL, but the income sensitivity provides a cushion. We don't want to ever, in my opinion, lose that cushion. And just to share with you an unaudited numbers have been running today is that even though we're going to, going to have a big increase in our combined Rochester Stockbridge tax rates, the, and that includes those paying by way of their income sensitivity rather than their property value, even with the increase we're going to see this year, you go back to before our SUD was existed, and compared to now, and those people paying by their income, their increase has been virtually zero. When you compare the years 2019, 2020, 21, 22, 23, 24, and now 25, this, this year is going to be a big one, an increase. But when you average it out, the news is it's much more, what should I say? Um, well, I think it puts things into perspective. Um, and that's where I think together we need to come up with a strategy. And I think I'm looking forward to our retreat because um, Justine has a whole list of things that we need to be working on to have a special program and then tell the community and outline contacts that we've got something special here and their kids should be coming and joining us. And, um, now more than ever, do we need a strategy and an implementation of a strategy given the increase in the CLA? So I'd like to see that happen and talk about it more when we get to the retreat. Thank you, Bill. Um, can I hear some of the other board members' uh, opinions so we can give our administration direction on this world language uh, area? Yeah, I'm in agreement with with Bill, obviously, because he was quoting me um, <laughs> for some of, with the dynamic program and how world language is really like um, it's it's very appealing to someone who is going to choose what kind of school their kid is going to go to because, you know, there's more and more studies about language being important when kids are younger to learn other languages when they're younger and um, we're a global society and all of that. But at the same time, I am a huge fan of artists in residence. I mean, I, I think they're great. And I totally agree with that you can have a really creative dynamic program and utilize, uh, absolutely utilize people who may or may not be uh, licensed teachers and create a really unique uh, dynamic program that is not like anyone else's. So um, I, I'm a, I'm fine with with cutting a little bit there as you know and looking into the artist in residence picture because I think that might just the concept of using artists in residence as I've talked about before can set us aside if we use it in a, in a certain way and show the community how 
dynamic we can create these programs on these tiny little budgets and with other types of funding from other places. So that's my opinion. Thank you, Justin. Yes, Pat. Yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about it. I, I agree with Justine. I, I do love the artists and residency programming. Um, <clears throat> but then part of me with the language, especially like Justine said it, I know it's really important um, for kids to to learn a, a, a second language at an earlier age is better. Um, there's many countries in Europe they're you know they learn english and they're fluent in english before they even leave fifth or sixth grade um and i've met many of them <laughs> and uh you know it's interesting to me because i you know we live in vermont and our you know we border canada and they speak yeah. french just over the border so why are we not striving to speak our neighbor's language um you know, I think there's a lot to say about that. And so that's where I start to think, okay, well, I really like the idea and the concept of partnering up with Bethel. And we really, you know, hit the ground running on trying to teach, say, French and just put our focus on one language as opposed to just getting them introduced to a bunch. I find, you know, I think it'd be much more useful for them um, to really focus on one individual language and the importance of that. Good point. Thank you, Pat. Cynthia, do you have two cents to, to put in? You're muted. Yeah. Um, I agree that uh, world languages are very important. Um, and I think that uh, the idea of focusing on one language is, uh, is, is very good. Um, we can't afford to teach several. And I think um, kids need to focus in on just one at a time anyway to, uh, to learn. I like the artist in residency idea, um, if we could find somebody. I don't know if that's possible, but um, I don't think we should dump world languages. Okay, thank you. Robert. Uh, I think the problem, the big problem is um, if you're gonna be sustainable, um, teaching one, one FTE per campus is is difficult to be effective and if you're trying to split a person among you know a, a full-time person uh, across several campuses it's just not going to work we've tried it um it isn't sustainable uh, i think the only way we could do it is is by doing a, a artist in residence you know, doing specials um whether or not that's one language or multiple languages um i i wouldn't wouldn't be able to judge, but uh, um, unless we were willing to increase our FTEs substantially, um, which it doesn't appear we were able to, to, I would go to an artist in residence sort of model and and figure out the do effective dollars that we need to do, which I, I don't know, I, I can't evaluate whether 10,000 or 20,000 or what's the appropriate. I think we need to really think it through, you know, yeah. 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 and come back. Yeah. Excellent. Um, and I know that, as you were saying, the licensure part of finding somebody is also very difficult at this time. Um, and maybe if you can take a look at what it would, what we could put in to do an intensive artist in residence type program um, that might actually spark some resident who might be interested in mm -hmm. next year, you know, uh, actually teaching. And hopefully we can get this in, continue to look to get this into our budget as a more um, permanent full-time. Full but I think if you could, for this budget, 
um, see what we could put Research. in to, to do to some type of intensive programming, um, you know, artists in residence type thing. Uh, is there any other specific lines in the uh, expenditure budget that uh, anybody wants to discuss? Okay, if not, I'd like to go over to the revenue um, revenue side. Um, and the our 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 surplus our fund balance or what do you call it to be yeah our fund balance um, though we don't know exactly what it is right now um, Tara did indicate that uh, it's projected to be two hundred and ten thousand dollars right now um, it was recommended to put uh, fifty thousand into our revenue budget. Um, that would mean the rest of it has to go into a reserve fund, whether it's the, a tuition reserve fund or a building mm -hmm. uh, reserve fund. Um, I think that we could help our um, tax rate slightly by putting more of the revenue into back into the budget. I don't think that... I don't. I, I think if we're going to keep the line item in the budget for the capital fund, the sixty-five thousand, which I think we should, because again, our budget is our policy statement, and I think that that's important. But we should fund, try to fund some of that with the um, fund balance that we have, rather than kind of double dipping and putting both pockets of money into a reserve. Uh, I think that would help reduce the tax rate. That would be my opinion. Patrick. I, I just had a question about, um, so you were, I think Jamie was saying earlier that one penny equates to 31,000. 31,000? Yeah, it's on no. our, this so, sheet. No, you can't see it. Yeah, Never so mind. my question would be how many pennies do we need to knock off to make a significant difference? Well, what do you feel is a significant difference in your tax rate? I mean, if you're looking at your is the Stockbridge tax rate is a dollar ninety eight. What how many pennies makes a difference? Essentially it's up twenty five pennies, Patrick. Right, it's up twenty five uh, pennies. So that okay. That that helps. Okay. okay. And underneath it we've broken it down how much that means per hundred thousand of assessed property yeah. value. I do also want to sorry, that probably was really loud. I I do also want to point out that um, in our articles of agreement, when we were projecting what our tax rate would be by us merging and, and not it, all these scenarios. Now, it was an estimate, but it, it was our best guess at the time. And um, it, as a unified district, we were projecting that last year's, the last year's um Last year's budget was going to be a tax rate of a dollar ninety nine. So what, by now we would be over two dollars. This is what we we were thinking was going to happen. We just were we're understanding that that the tax rate was just going to be going up and up and up. It hasn't as much as we had projected, which is good. I just wanted to bring that out as a um, you know. Sure. Right. So by taking, um, you know, ninety, uh, like ninety three thousand, that would take three cents. If we if we took ninety three thousand dollars of revenue and put it into our into this budget, we would it'd take three cents down on the tax rate. But you know. So just so you know, Patrick, and for everyone else, that's thirty bucks per hundred thousand of assessed okay. value. Just when you yeah. think three cents, just right. so people. Three cents is 30, 30 bucks yeah. off. That, yeah, that's helpful. That's what I was trying to. Yeah, no, right. We're talking three cents. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, so say somebody with a two hundred thousand dollar home. That's sixty. We'll say sixty bucks. Yep. yep. If we if we. Dump in what did you say ninety three thousand. Ninety three thousand, right? I just took the thirty one thousand and times it by three. You know, just get three. Yeah. What what three cents? Um, you know, and, and like you're saying, that impact 
on a hundred thousand dollars if if you look at that tax calculated tax rate um, it shows in in Stockbridge that for um, hundred thousand dollars of value you're paying uh, two hundred and fifty two dollars extra in tax so you'd be about five hundred at five hundred dollars more for a two hundred thousand yeah. dollar house yeah yeah so um but you know, I mean, the the, the change is it's pretty drastic. I mean, it's or dramatic. I mean, you know, it's it's quite an increase. Um, but what's incredible is that our actual budget is only up three cents, right? Yeah. Three cents per. That's that the tax rate. We're only up in taxes three cents, but that actually equates to thirty one cents in Rochester and twenty five cents in Stockbridge because of our CLAs, because and we have CLA. no control over the CLAs. And I don't think it's fair for us to, to slaughter our budget uh, and change the way we're educating our kids to get that tax rate down. Um, I think our tax payers want us to continue to educate the kids as we are. Um, yeah, and no, I think you're right then. You know, I think if we want to make a difference, it's, it's putting more of that money into it. Yeah. Yeah, the surplus, yeah. Because we are, we are still having that line item of sixty-five thousand, that for capital improvements, which is important. It is very important for us to continue to have that capital improvements. In the past, we've done it with this surplus. Instead of putting it back into the budget to lower the tax rate, we've put it into a reserve fund, um, which is another way to go. Um, but I feel that it would be, kind of be double dipping on it if we did both. Yeah. Just because we're in this situation. I mean, if we weren't in this situation, you know, if the tax rate was a, was was a lot lower, I would say, you know, yeah, let's let's we we want that for a reserve, but just trying to Do you to, think we should put some of it in a tuition, the tuition reserve fund? Yeah. I I think that's a great idea. We're tight. Cuz we're tight there, right? I mean, if we can yeah. if we if we could even put a you know, one student's tuition in, we'll be ahead of the game if we get a student, you know. Mm -hmm. That would be my recommendation, but please, um, anybody else? What was the what was the total amount of the surplus? It, the, it's surplus estimated price. still at this time. At two ten. Uh, but it's two hundred and ten. Two ten, and then what do you think? I mean, do we then do we take most of it then and put it in, yeah. and then like you're saying, just do the remainder into? into the tuition fund yeah i guess i would like to to consult with the you know the administration yeah. and the business office and just let you know have them know our intention that we would like to put more revenue back into this budget um and we yeah. we would like to see a significant amount of it go back into this budget but we do also want to put some into um a tuition um reserve account and I would, I would look for them for what they feel would be the most appropriate. Well, I... Yes, Bill. One of our responsibilities is to make tough decisions. This is a tough decision. Yep. But I like to think we, all of us collectively, have a responsibility that we take extremely personally and that is that we're not going to kick the can down the road, whether it's for capital, putting money aside for capital, or spending down to the last dime. So next year's board, and I hope all of us will be on the board next year, we don't have a, even a tighter mission impossible task. And that's only 12 months ahead of us. So I guess I encourage you and the board to ask our superintendent um, to come back to him, us with his guidance. I'm right now leaning towards putting money into most of that money into reserve, whether it's capital or for future tuition support, and then work like hell to get as many kids to come and be in our schools because we're special and we know it, and we're going to tell everybody about it, and that will be our strategy. Um, I think, quite first. This is a CLA issue, and we've got to be able to explain that to people. And cut, cut, cut is going to hurt us in so many ways. Poor performance. Right. It's, it's not going to make a meaningful difference in, in, in the taxes. We might lose on that. 
but I much rather fight the fight and to, to keep quality education that we're all proud of and want to build on. And I don't know about you, I get my kicks knowing that we're doing better, that we've got yeah. special schools. Um, and, but we've got to give them the resources so they can be special. Absolutely. Um, so I sort of like, sorry, sorry to spend so much time. No, I think that's I, I exactly right, Bill. You've, you've said it right there. We, we have improved our test scores have improved. Our kids have improved. Uh, we sh we do not want to cut that just for a few pennies off of a tax rate. Um, and I d and I don't think we have. And that's what when we were talking about the expenditure budget, um, there was we were not asking the administration to go back and cut more. Um, well, maybe we can find a happy medium that we can put more money back into more. Um, revenue, more money into the revenue <laughs> budget, and put money into a building reserve fund and into a um, tuition. It'll be smaller amounts, maybe, but yeah. yeah. Okay, Robert. Just want to note that people are going to look at the the um, the line uh, line from you know 2022-23 is 150. 23, 24 is 175, and then we're suddenly dropping it to 50. I think if we make that not such a drop to show that, yeah, we're trying to keep an even keel might be appropriate. It, it doesn't have to be. The problem is it's not always going to be even keel in the long term. Right. That's right? true. So we, every year you put more and more of your surplus in, the harder and harder it does on our Right, but, but this is also one of those difficult years because the of the CLA. CLA. Drop right. Really significant. So time. since it's there, I think people will want us to use some of it. Maybe not right. 175, maybe not even 150, but I think it probably has to be larger than 50. Right, because it is tax dollars that they've put, that the, already the, they, they've already paid it. And so they're saying, okay, you have that, you already have that money. Um, and I don't understand how, like, in the future, Future, it really affects. Oh, just because. Well, if we it, didn't have any right now. Yeah. It would be that we'd have to try to find that money. Right. Right. Which is or what it would you increase yeah. the tax rate. Right. Okay. I mean, the thing that we've got going for us this year is again, and I think that's an important thing we we'll need to drum home. But you said it, Amy, is that the actual budget itself is only driving the tax rate up three cents. Right. The CLA is doing the rest. Right. Three cents. That's, that's it. Crazy. Yeah, and I do think that that is a, a big um, big point. Yes, Patrick. Um, yeah, no, just thinking about the Capital Improvements Fund, and, you know, I think sometimes there's a little hesitancy as to putting money in there and what people will think of that. Um, but wouldn't it, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it would do the opposite, but would it be helpful if we had a clear understanding of what, like, you know, I keep saying we need to make a list of what the capital improvements are at each campus and, and yes. the cost, approximate cost would be associated with that and the importance of, of each. And if we could share something like that with the public as to, hey, look, we, we need to think about this and this at both campuses and there's a cost associated with that, we, we have no choice but to put money into our capital improvement fund, yes. reserve fund. And I think if they could see hard numbers and factual, um, you know, project scopes, then I think it'd be an easier sell. Thank you. Yep. Um, I'm on the budget and finance for the town of Rochester. And one thing that they've done in the past, which we're paying for to, today in this budget, is that they rated their reserve funds. And um, one of the arguments was, was that, oh, well, gee, interest rates are so low, it's easier to finance things like a truck or whatever. Well, guess what Not happened? <laughs> now interest rates went from half a percent to, you know. Eight percent, yeah. Eight percent and whatever, and they're, they're caught short. Um, so it, I don't think you, if, if you point out that especially now that because we, um, interest rates are so high that that's not the way you want to go. You want to do 
financing on reserve by reserve funds ahead of time. It's going to be a lot cost you a lot less than the long run. Meaning, put put more money into the put reserve. Put more money into the reserve. Yeah. Certainly, don't take any less. Don't put any less in the reserve fund. Right. Okay. I think we've given you direction yeah. on that. Is there any other comments on the budget? Um, otherwise, we will we will see it again. Okay. I'm gonna go G hat on. Be back. Okay. Thank you so much for staying. Um, do we have any <coughs> public? So do two guests. Two guests part now. Of our... They're both oh, guests. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Part of the thank you. Part of the agenda. Okay, excellent. Um, okay, so uh, six point three uh, book development. I uh, will be honest with you. I did not read. <laughs> I'm I'm very sorry, but I'm going to be Busy honest. Time. It was um, yeah. I, I was I was getting. You don't have to. I was getting prepared for this budget. It took a lot of energy out of me. I hear you. But so go ahead. Uh, somebody else take it away. <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll kick it off. And Amy, uh, we're all feeling what you're feeling. And we're up in the air doing things that are important, whether it's family, community, uh, or neighborhood, um, or for ourselves. So, and this is, this budget is tough and everything that's going on, it, it takes, it, it, it takes time and I can totally feel for it. Uh, chapter two, if I can just start to kick it off and then I like to ask fellow board members, what were the highlights of chapter two that you thought were meaningful that you would like to share and the highlights that you think we're doing and um, feel good about and those things where we have gaps that we need to think about. So, um, but this is about building a foundation for student success. And then we're gonna go next month on, on, on actually student achievement. And the hey, big word Peter. that came through with me on this chapter was collaboration. I think it's a real strength of us. Collaboration between board members. Um, I mean, we have different points of view. We can kind of lean into things and points of view, but boy, I think we're damn good about listening and working together, coming up with a, the best product that we can do. And we do it because it's collaboration. The other big thing about this chapter was collaboration with a superintendent. It goes from kind of like an accountability that the superintendent is accountable to us to a kind of a co-leadership position where we have need to must work collaboratively together with a superintendent and we need a superintendent that believes in collaboration and again i think we've got a lot to celebrate there uh, as well and one of the points in this chapter was um the importance of Recruiting a good superintendent that's talented and believes in collaboration um, and has the skills and the teamwork um, and also to retain him or her. And believe it or not, we I think we all agree that we've got the superintendent and recently we've extended his contract for a sustainable period um, to allow us to hopefully meet the dreams that we all have for our students. Um, so that's the highlights I got out of it. I'm just wondering if anybody else would like to share um, anything uh, about Chapter 2 that, that caught your interest. Robert. Um, I certainly, those were the main points that I got out of Chapter 2. But it also, um, the whole issue of retaining, um, uh, I think, you know, and this is something that will bring, I'll bring up in, in the, um, preparation for the board retreat is I think we really need to uh, consider preparation for the future where we might have a change of superintendent and we will probably have changes in, in um, board members and we need to see what we have to do to strengthen what we have to be able to uh, weather those changes. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really happy with where we are. I'd like to keep it that way. Um, 
with any potential change, whether it be, you know, in, in short term or long or a long ways away in a change in superintendent. And I know that we're going to have changes in, in board composition. So. Yeah. Um, not to overdo it, but before last fall, uh, this was going to be Jamie's last year on his, with his contract. Uh, now his last year uh, will be at the end of 2028. Nice. So we've built ourselves <laughs> He's uh, stuck. a platform of stability that can sustain what we're all trying to do. And Robert, you're right on because, well, we these things can really any at any level really really slow us down and stop what we're trying to do. You're right on. Any else? Justine, you. What do you say? Cynthia, anything that struck you? Chapter two. The part I liked most in the um, in chapter two okay. is the uh, conclusion that the board needs to constantly push the system and ask the questions. Uh, it's governance, not management. And I think this is true with this board and what we're trying to do. Anything else? Uh, Suzette, mm -hmm. you're muted. There you go. Of course I am. <laughs> Sorry. So I have not been introduced, and I will do this later because I'm the person that that Jamie contacted to help with the retreat. So I'm just lending an ear. But um, I wanted to ask you, what is the book that you're reading? I don't know what we're reading. Uh, the the essential school board book. It's this is okay, the great. this is the second book that we've we've done. Uh, yeah, no, she was telling me that you were doing these book studies. That, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So the um, next chapter, next February fifth, chapter three, staying focused on achievement. Nice, great, thank you, Bill. Yeah, thanks everybody. Okay, so um, 6.4, preparation and finalization of board retreat agenda for January 20th. Um, so, so Suzette is here uh, because Jamie has asked her to facilitate our retreat on uh, the 20th. And Suzette, I'll kind of let you introduce yourself and then we can start to work on the agenda and feel free to... Our board chair, I'll jump in. Yeah, no, I've been taking, um, I've been taking notes, and I think that um, you know your attitudes about the way you work and your uh, commitment to collaboration and how you want to work with Jamie are spot on. But um, I ret I'm a retired superintendent uh, from actually Central Vermont Supervisory Union, just north of you. Mm -hmm. uh, retired in in uh, 2021. And after 44 plus years in the business and more than 20 years in administration. And um, uh, <laughs> Jamie was a former colleague of mine. So that's what our connection is. The primary, primarily what I'm doing now is to, um, to help boards in this way, but also to uh, uh, mentor principals and um, have mentored a couple of, of principals in your SU in the, uh, last year. So I'm looking forward to working with you and trying to help you put those pieces together that will maintain your sustainability. I think thinking about um, making your school special and um, attracting other students is something that um, is well worth your time and um, really speaks to how much you care about your school. But also the comments that were made about, you know, there will be a change in leadership at some point. There will be change in board membership. So you need to really look at, you know, what it is that, that makes you special and what is important to you and to have that really um, clearly outlined so that folks coming in fully understand um, who you are and where you want to go. So I'm excited to lend a hand if there's anything I, that I can do, so. Wonderful. 
So at our last retreat, we um, started to uh, discuss our go board goals, and um, uh, Bill and Justine have uh, took it from there and were able to um, to really do some good updating. Um, and we did um, adopt them last uh, meeting. Uh, but our next question was kind of, okay, well, we've got our goals now. How are we going to do it? <laughs> so uh, that is definitely, you know, one topic for our retreat. Um, and also we wanted to revisit our um, mission and our vision statement. And I'll have survey results for you. And survey results. Okay, great. From your community survey. Community survey results. Yep. Um, Great. You had a community um, there's, survey? Yeah, there's one that's active now. So uh, it was in response to, let me see if I can get this wording right, that this is year five of our merger, or we're going into year five? No, we are. I think this is year five. This is year five. And there was something in the articles of agreement about collecting some feedback. Right. Yeah. Um, so kind of... We Evaluate where we are at. Yes. So that went live last week, right after the new year. So it's out in the community, and we already have quite a few responses, which is good. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's great. Um, and I, I don't know if it's appropriate at the retreat or not, but I wanted to really discuss the dates and the procedure for um, officer election for the upcoming, for our, our annual meeting that's upcoming up. We had talked about it at our last retreat, and I don't know if we want to just bring that up in a regular meeting, or I'll, I can talk to Jamie if about that. It might be a regular. It meeting might be a regular meeting. Thing. Okay, it was just it was more of like a conversation type piece, so that's why. Yeah, he uh, can the, probably the guide retreat you is a really nice one. conversation piece. Okay. Yes, Robert. Uh, I would like to add to the agenda for the retreat, as I mentioned before, of uh, continuity, of mm -hmm. of. What do we need to do to um, uh, ensure that all our goals and such continue on with changes? Uh, I'll have to say for Suzette that I was on the board um, for Rochester Schools uh, starting in the 90s, early 90s, and I observed for maybe 13 years and such, and I saw a lot of changes in in um, administration and superintendents and such. And the way, you know, I, I at the time I likened the way um, that it was uh, akin to putting your shoulder against the wall, a wall, concrete wall and trying to push it to make changes and to, to move ahead. And I will tell you that with my, I, I rejoined the board uh, what was it, two years ago? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's entirely different. Uh, um, we're of of the approach to making changes. It's 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 um, as an engineer, I've very much appreciated. It. It's like an it's like an engineering development of where you make changes, you evaluate them, you test, and then you you circle back. And we're also seeing that there's results. So um, uh, I'd like to, for this to continue, you know, beyond just, you know, with, with a change in superintendent, change in, in board members, and, you know, beyond when I'm, I'm on the board. So not just about what your goals and, and such are, but also how the board actually functions. Mm -hmm. And will continue to function. I mean, we're, we don't want to have have a loss of, um, you know, the, there's experience from all, all the board members, but, you know, when with changes, we're going to lose some, but hopefully gain some. But we need to, to smooth that process, uh, facilitate that process, and, and build it into our, our uh, in as part of our goals and such, I believe. Excellent. Well, I think we better ta cap it there because... Um, we definitely, we, we've already had one retreat and we needed, needed a second, so. Right. Um, well, we can just open the discussion on this. Yeah, it, it could be like the be beginning of, of the discussion of what, 
how we could move forward on it. Right. Okay. That, right. We don't need to solve it. We just need no. to begin to talk <laughs> about it. Okay. That sounds great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> well, good. Well, we look forward to, uh, and will you, you'll be in person at our retreat? Yes. That is my plan. Wonderful. That would I be good. I don't know where it is yet, but I'll find out. <laughs> I'll be there. Yeah. Yep. Wonderful. Okay. That That's great. And Thank I you. Think I will, Amy, may try to be in on your plan, last, this planning meeting with Jamie, and that'll give me a little bit more information about really what your, what your agenda is. Yes, you can, absolutely. So sort of, um, kind of chew on that. He's, um, I asked you to send me some of your, your documents and I think I'm going to ask for the, um, uh, even your articles of agreement. I led a merger up between Northfield and Williamstown and the Washington Orange. That was my crew. Okay. Yeah. So I'm familiar with that. All yeah. of those commitments, and I, you know, I give you a lot of credit that lots of people have walked away from those uh, articles of agreement, but oh. they could, they would come back to bite you. <laughs> <laughs> right. You ignored them. <laughs> Someone would come forward. So I think putting your community survey out is really just a reflection of your commitment to making this work, and that's what it's about. Like kids making it work for them. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Wonderful. Well, I will, um, let you go. You've got more business to do. I look forward to uh, seeing you in person on the 20th. Yes. And, um, Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, successful. Coming. I hope you'll be celebrating. <laughs> At least that you're comfortable with what you're what you're bringing forward. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Um, 6.5 solar array update. Yeah, no. So I just sent an email out. Uh, Deborah, who is the uh, uh, the individual that was so kind to donate her um, panels, not so used solar array. It's, <laughs> it's not that old. Um, and uh, she has the panels right now stored in her barn, and she's just curious. She really wants to see it progress and at the very least she's looking to gain space back in her barn um so you know i i know when i sent that email out i think there's a little confusion as to who was responsible for what and what was next um and uh that all aside i you know i'm totally willing to to kind of lead it up and uh, make the next steps as far as communicating with uh Matt Cooper, Array of Sunshine, um, and kind of getting on his schedule and what is required of us um, to do that. But it also, I think, you know, I think we should consider where we could move these panels right now from her barn to get them out of out of her way. Um, I don't know if there's anywhere at, at the school or, you know, somewhere town can hold on to them or whatnot but um you know if i have a location i can figure out moving them mm -hmm. um how about the space that's below the music room in the rochester high school because that one there's a fair. tractor in there right now oh there and is. there's yep there's something else in there too okay. i don't remember why i know the tractor's in there okay. there's something else in there okay i mean how big are they pat Sorry, I wouldn't. They like the size of this I want to table. Say like three foot by five foot, and okay. there's probably two stacks. So that's the footprint, and then they probably are stacked up like six feet tall. I know that uh, my memory from the project was that we were waiting for EEI to finish their stuff done. on the roof because they were going to had protrusions coming out of the roof yeah. and we w didn't want to get the solar up there before they were done to make sure we weren't in their way and, yeah. and everything. And I think they're, no. they're done, done now. They're done now. So. No, that, that sounds right. And so now, I mean, we're, we're at a point we could do that. So is that something you want me to do is coordinate with Matt? Yes, if you could. Um, okay. I'll just do a group, group email. Right, and then I okay. don't know that there's... Can we talk about what a safe space... I have some ideas on safe space on where we could store it, but I I wouldn't know what the guidelines yeah. are on... There's a wide range. Yeah, <laughs> array. I mean, also, if I talk to Matt, too, first, and just see you know how 
realistically how far out is it? Okay. If we give Deborah a timeline, she might be like, oh, that's great. You know, okay. No problem. If you'll start oh, that, God. and then yeah. if it, if we need to move it sooner than that, then we can come up with some spaces. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. yeah. I'll send out an email. Thank you. And, and, and you. I'll, I'll just put the board on it and okay. go from there. Okay, great. So Pat's going to head head up moving that forward. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Right. Okay. Is there any question, more questions on the solar array? I presume we have to wait till spring. Not necessarily. No. Okay. It's not me on the roof, I guess. So. <laughs> I was gonna say my husband's roofing. He roofed today. You would so, know. Like, you can roof. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So uh, number seven, celebration of learning. Yes. So I wanted to introduce to our board Mr. Jeffrey Perry, who's our uh, music teacher in both Rochester and Stockbridge, and he's here tonight to kind of give you a couple of videos and explain kind of what we're learning in the younger grades, the older grades, and then a little snapshot of, uh, we had some Rochester and Stockbridge students perform in the- Night before the night before. Thank you. The night before the night before um, performance in conjunction with the White River Valley players. So he's gonna turn it over to Mr. Jeffrey. Thank you, Mr. Jeffrey, for waiting. Sorry, I should have known better with the budget that we would <laughs> I know, be a little longer. <laughs> I told my family it was gonna be a late night. <laughs> Try to think positive. No problem. Hello, everyone. Yes. Um, thank you so much for inviting me um, to tonight's board meeting call. And I'm really happy to share with you what's been going on um, in music class within Rochester and Stockbridge schools and celebrate their learning in music and the performing arts. So really, I'm just going to start um, and go by grade level, start with lower grades and work up, um, like Lindy was saying, um, to the upper grades. So. Next slide, we'll start with Rochester. Um, this is class kindergarten and first graders. And in this video, they are chanting um, a little chant and it helps, to, it helps them with an awareness of beat and getting a sense of like a steady beat and pulse and playing those quarter notes um, that they're also chanting. So if we play the video, you'll see them doing a couple of different things. Ready, go. One, four, ice cream. Two, four, soda. Three, two, one. Two, mana, soda. So it's a <laughs> short little chant. And um, yeah, it's, it's. I think it's funny and they, they enjoy it. And also like we've talked about like at the end of the chant, it mentions Minnesota. And we've talked about like how long would it take to walk to Minnesota? So we're doing a couple different things there talking of, um, also about like geography in a way. Um, but really the main point is getting them um, exposed to the steady beat in music and having them play it. Um, and I, I introduced this in a couple different steps. First, just um, by rote taught them the chant and we tapped at the same time. And then I, after a, a couple classes, showed them the words so they could read the words and then gradually put the notes, the rhythms above the words. So, really a, a couple of stages going on to yeah. eventually lead to um, reading music. Um, and so the next slide Ready, goes on go. to One, four. not only keeping a steady beat with quarter notes, but um, now adding eighth notes into the picture. So this new, this next chant shows both going on. Ready and go. Again, a short chant, but um, really helps them with awareness of beat and starting to develop rhythm, more complex rhythms where they subdivide the beat into two. So they're doing quarter notes and eighth notes. Um, and this is, these activities are also shared with stock Bridge as well. I'm doing the same things with Stockbridge. I just um, didn't grab video of what was going on with K1 Stockbridge, but we're doing the exact same things over at Stockbridge as we are in Rochester. Um, and so when we go on to the next slide. Ready and go. We're going to check out. Um, second and third graders at Stockbridge doing a quick vocable. And a vocable is like looking at um, 
music, but it's not normal music notation. It's um, just a series of letters or words that move up and down. And so it's kind of alternative notation and they're working as in two groups. So one group is reading one set of the vocable and the other group is reading the other set. So it's kind of um, produces like two, they're, they're singing two parts at the same time. So they're getting used to singing um, not only in a group, but also differentiating different parts. Here we go. <laughs> so yeah, it um, explores kind of um, making sound, um, controlling pitch going up and down, and also this like back Here and forth with rhythm. Go. The next video is a call and response song that I've been working on with second and third graders at Stockbridge. And um, it's um, a leader leads the song and they echo everything that I'm doing. And eventually we've actually done, um, we've taken this to the next level in class where they've started to be the leader and everyone's echoing them. But watching the video, you'll get the idea of how it first started. One, two, ready, go. Johnny on the wood pile. Johnny on the wood pile. Johnny on the fence. Johnny on the fence. Johnny got a haircut. Johnny got a haircut. For 15 cents. For 15 cents. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's a short little song. Um, and yeah, now they're starting to lead it. Um, I'm lucky I'm able to sing at that high range to match their their notes, so it's um, that's good. Uh, going on to the next slide, we're going to look at Rochester second and third grade. Um, this is a short little clip of them moving to the beat. Um, they're walking or moving in their own way to um, express quarter notes and eighth notes. And in this moment, you're seeing them move to eighth notes. T. So they're moving to that eighth note um, rhythm, which is that, 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 that. But before that, they were just moving to quarter notes, which was that, that, that. And then they went on to that, 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 that. I so, bet they loved it. it yeah. Really yeah, it's something <laughs> we do that often. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, they get the music in their whole body. And they can yeah, I really and, um, think, yeah, to embody the music and to like feel it and, um, just have that sense of beat throughout the whole body, yeah. Um, this is just a little fun activity, move and freeze, and we were using the Promethean board, um, and so it's it's a just a little fun activity that we do. <laughs> um, at the end, the camera started to go down. That's because I was doing the motion with them, but what would, what happened is they froze, and and then it started to go again. Um, but yeah, it's it's cool to use technology. That was my first time using the Promethean with Rochester Stockbridge. So I want to incorporate more um, technology and lessons. Um, and going on to the next slide, just like uh, Stockbridge, second and third graders here are singing Johnny on the Woodpile um, as call and response. Johnny on the Woodpile. Johnny on the Woodpile. Johnny on the Fence. Johnny on the Fence. Johnny got a haircut. Johnny got a haircut for fifteen cents. For fifteen cents. <laughs> and yeah, I just um really trying to build a culture of singers, and they are singing. They're so eager to sing, and I love hearing their voices. Um, so great, uh, so much fun, and um, this last slide shows kind of the culminative work that um fourth fifth and sixth graders have been doing between rochester and stockbridge and this is a longer clip and it shows um one part of the night before the night before christmas event uh this was a little portion um that happened at the beginning of the event and really just wanted to highlight the fact that dorothy robson and the white river valley players in invited um us to do that and really i'm really thankful for that um community connection and support because it really, it was, I, th I think it was a great um, experience for them and it was a great experience for me. Um, 
and this cliff really highlights the work that we were doing towards the end of the first trimester and, and as we work up to holiday break. Yeah, it was really, really great to hear those applause at the end and to see the kids' faces light up. It brought me so much joy. Um, and um, I think that clip really shows the extent of the work that they were doing. Um, really, they were putting three different songs together into one, and it was all sung a cappella, which is really hard to do. Um, so really working on some higher tasks and um, getting those singing voices engaged. And, and I love it so much. Yeah, I was at that uh, concert and it was really impressive to have them do this round. And I mean, I was very impressed at what uh, you've gotten them to be able to do. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. Yeah, really happy to be um, sharing music with Rochester and Stockbridge kids, and uh, I have a great time. And um, yeah, thank you so much for inviting me to share a little bit of what's been going on. We love it. They, we, we love this. The best part of our meeting is when we get to see what's happening. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you so much for coming. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay. Good night. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. Good night. Thanks. All right, that was great. That was great. And uh, it was definitely a packed house. Just add <laughs> kids and it will pack the house. So that so was great. great. And I know he has some plans of some February slash March potential like combined performance. Oh, that's wonderful. So I think this helped. 
the partnership with Dorothy Robinson and the White River Valley players help give them some kind of insight. On how Absolutely. To oh, that's make wonderful. That work, so. Yeah, that I'm sure that they are very supportive of. They're very yes, supportive of the arts. They are. So They're very great. supportive. They're great. Wonderful. Okay. Well, we are going to move on now to uh, 8.1 principles, winter social emotional data report. Yeah. So first you have my just uh, monthly report there okay, before yeah. we go. Um, I think the only thing that I will kind of add on the, um, really on the facilities update, uh, we're back. Kids are back. It was a Monday. <laughs> we had a normal Monday. Felt like we hadn't had one of those in a while. Um, so that was great. Um, and then I would say um, in terms of facilities, pretty much all of the EEI work is complete. Now it's really just fine tuning things and making sure everything works right. This is the last room that lighting has to get done in either building and they will be here Monday to fix that or finish that I should say. Um, but other than that, everything is up to date and we're really just fine tuning the control systems and making sure things are working the right way. Awesome. Um, How's so it that, feeling so far? The new heat. It's pretty uh, cool to be able to like see it visually. Like you can see the floor plan and see what's heating and what's not. Yeah. I was saying to Ray earlier tonight. I think the the key piece is like how long does it take the building to heat up? Yep. Things like that that we haven't really had accurate information on, and also really that teachers don't have the ability to like crank it all the way up to what I call hot yoga. <laughs> <laughs> that we're like in a normal monitoring yeah. range because we used to be one extreme or the other, especially in Rochester. Yes. That was either yeah. cool or really warm. Melting crayons or uh... exactly. <laughs> um, so that is kind of where we're at. That's so it, it'll be it'll be nice. They've also provided some insight going back to Patrick's um, facility list of some things that we shouldn't let go mm -hmm. and to keep on our radar for sooner rather than later, which has been helpful. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's been great. And then uh, winter wellness will start Friday. All right. So, thankfully, hopefully we will still have snow. Um, they blow snow up there. They Thank do. Goodness. They do. <laughs> Thank goodness. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Even on the beginner. Yes. So, uh, which is most important. So we're excited for that to get going. Excellent. That's wonderful. I, I saw um, a little girl on Sunday who was on a snowboard at uh, Middlebury and I said, oh, are you, you snowboard? She said, well, I've learned at the winter wellness. Yes. And so I was like, that's great. You, uh, it you has, know, and she wouldn't have had that experience if, absolutely. Um, that, when she didn't have this opportunity. So. And I give our families and kids a lot of credit because they try different things. Like just, they've already know how to ski. They take advantage of the opportunity to try maybe snowboarding snowboard or, or vice versa. Else. So nice. that's, um, Pretty unique, I think, about both communities and very cool to see. Excellent. And would have, um, if the kids are not participating in the um, traveling part of winter wellness, we have another opportunity for that. Yep. So I think it's a little weather dependent for the first Friday. I know that both campuses have been working out their details, but some of it will be in the woods and outside and some snowshoeing, I think, is what's on tap for this week. But luckily, none of kids' participation or not participation has to do with it. Correct. Yeah, this campuses. is all Title IV funded yes. from our um, grant. So it's not even in our local budget anymore. That's it's how we use our grant funds. So. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, is there any questions just on the principal's report for Lindy? Bill? Yeah, another question. Just a appreciation. Um, in your report about having a community conversation about literacy and in particular about direct instruction, because I think um, that just is so important about moving our kids ahead. And to the extent that parents and other people understand the importance and how well we're doing and understanding what kind of the, the framework of that direct instruction, I think that will help us down the road. Thank you. You're welcome. And so once we have the dates finalized, I'll send those out to folks so people can join. We'll do one night in Rochester, one night in Stockbridge with a, some sort of uh, community meal first. And then Janie will give a quick overview. And then people have an opportunity to rotate around classrooms, uh, probably three to four different spaces and see the different programs in action. That's great. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. What's going on? Wonderful. Okay, there's no further questions on the 
um, principal report, and we'll move on to the social emotional. Yeah, so you have um, the social emotional learning report in front of you. Um, so this is one we do in December, well, January, sorry, it's up through December. Uh, and then again, at the end of the school year or towards the end of the school year, uh, lots of celebrations, I think, in this report. And you can tell we've really invested a lot of time in training up all our staff to be able to use responsive classroom, uh, which helps set routines, expectations, uh, building community within your morning meeting, um, as well as taking time to go to Best Institute, where we really focus in on what those expectations are, how we can better articulate them, and then just helping students with self-regulation skills uh, as well as social emotional learning skills, um, not just when the school counselor comes into the classroom, but all day long. And it's paying off. If you kind of scroll to the bottom, you'll see that compared to last year, uh, to this year, the number of referrals or students that I'm seeing for children's behaviors, for the most part, is significantly decreasing. December was a little bumpy, but that's okay. It tends to be no matter. Yes, vacations. You know, vacations, yeah. weather, all sorts of stuff. Um, and then if you go to the, the next page, flip over on the back, you will you can visually kind of see that increase or increase. So um, in September, that would, from year to year, it's an 82% reduction number of students. Uh, October is 4% and November is 64%. So we're really making some progress. It doesn't mean that we're stopping. We're still utilizing some plans, uh, supporting some students with what's called a check-in or a check-out plan, where they have three pretty specific goals for, around either their meeting, they sometimes met, or they're trying again around being respectful, responsible, and ready to learn. And those plans are set up based on students who have several referrals. So we look mm -hmm. at every month, twice a month, how many referrals each student has to determine that the right supports are in place beyond what every student gets. Um, and that, so now we're in year two of this format. So we're really starting to see this decrease plans, um, decrease in plans and decrease in student needs. They're starting to be able to use those skills themselves, which, themselves, which is great. Uh, we are <laughs> seeing uh, kind of midweek is when we see the most referrals or most students. Um, one thing, this is what we spent pretty much all of our January 2nd in-service time on, working on as a staff. And one thing that was pointed out is during those days, sometimes, or well, in either building, there's either no PE or no outdoor ed. Mm. And is that why we see this uptick sometimes in the afternoon behaviors? And that's kind of a wonder that the staff has chosen to pay attention to um, from now uh, through the month to just kind of see how that works and just keep evaluating. We look at referrals by time. Um, that's great. That the data yeah, is right here. It's it's been great and it makes sense with what I see. Right. <laughs> So she has the data to back it exactly. up. Exactly. So. The data supports, I would say, what I'm seeing yeah. from some friends. Um, and then in terms of like some targeted supports for students or students that are supported by behavior plan or checking and check out or an intervention plan, 4%, uh, this is combined, of our students are supported with that check in, check out sheet or plan. Uh, only 3.2% of those students have even one step further of a social emotional uh, intervention plan and 1.6 students are on both a social emotional targeted plan and an academic intervention plan, which is great because it's showing us that our behavior is under control. So it's not getting in the way of our academics, mm. um, which is again, another huge celebration. And in terms of students with academic plans, so IEPs, Academic 504 is not necessarily a health need or a targeted plan. About 28% of our students are supported by one of those plans. Um, with hopes that by the end of the month, we're exiting a few more. But we'll see once we get our track and our progress data. That's kind of where we are. I'll take any questions. Bill? <laughs> 
<laughs> I got it before he even put his hand up. I can feel it. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you for doing it. It is so important, and it's one of the superintendent's <laughs> goals is to um, not only have a wonderful, or, or productive, effective social emotional program, but to be able to measure it and see it in action. And we're seeing it right now with this very enlightening report. My one question, Lindy, was on the the statistics you just gave us, the students with formal check and check in, check out 4%, and then the students with social emotional 3.2%. Is there a way at some point you're gonna be able to share with us um, how that fits in? One thing we'll know, how it, it's changing over time, but how do we have some sense of how this is with the rest of the educational world? Um, are there benchmarks out there that we're gonna be using to kind of see how we're doing? Um, I think it's, I don't, I, I'm not an expert on this, but I'm just, so my question is how, how do we have a better appreciation of how these, how these percentages stack up? Yeah, please. Uh, great question, Bill. And it's actually something that the the SU team is going to bring to the full board in regards to some goals and show some normed um, research around where we should be. In it's general, uh, PBIS, Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports out of Oregon, University of Oregon is where it started, would say that 80 to 85% of your students should not need a plan. Um, and then that you'll see another about 10% needing like a targeted plan and about 5% need three to five needing yep. an intensive. Based on those metrics, you know, you're in a pretty good place around the social emotional data. Same would go for us in academics. Ideally, we'd like to see that 28% figure get down more to that 20 or 15% of needing yeah. actual intervention plans. Um, but we're going to map that out um, for the full board like we have done with the academic goals. And I really wanna leverage the idea of the percentage of students needing um, either target or intensive supports as one of the measures we use for our social emotional system. I think it's important to, I just think it's a, a better way than just always leveraging office referrals. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's some mechanisms and metrics we might use with office referrals too, but having some additional metrics that we use for measuring our success, I think. And that's why we wanted to start to lay out some of these percentages for folks. Okay, one other thing, I'm sorry, I know it's late. Uh, Jamie, uh, we've spent a lot of time on our budgets, both the RSUD and then the SU. Um, are you confident that if these budgets get uh, passed and implemented, they're what we need? Yeah, I'm feeling good about it. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think I would just share this, the huge uh, shout out to the staff because I'm not sure a year ago that uh, that percentage was, I know it wasn't that low. So they worked really hard and bought into that and it shows. That's great. So it's great to see. Thank you staff. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are there any other questions or comments on the social emotional uh, report? Great, let's move on then to the superintendent and Act 27 update. 127. 127. Yeah, so I mean, I think you're becoming more accustomed to Act 127. What I would say to board members is, is that Tara and I are more than willing to schedule a virtual meeting or an in-person meeting to sit down to just walk through that tax sheet with you again, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we've done a couple in the last week. I just did one this morning with a board member from another district. So know that that's out there um, as a resource source to you so that when someone asks you what's driving the tax rate, that you feel really confident that you can explain uh, what the portion is <laughs> in regards to your budget versus like what the CLA is affecting. Um, Cause I know that you guys get asked those questions in the grocery store and things. Um, and I want you to feel like you can speak to it. So feel free to reach out. 
Uh, the other the other update I would have uh, for the board is that the session just started, the legislative session. Um, I expect that the education uh, committees are going to be pretty busy. Um, and you know, one of the one of the bills I want to just remind the board of is that the bill out of the House to address Carson v. Macon around uh, public uh, dollars funding students to attend independent schools. The House Ed Committee, I thought, had put together a really thoughtful bill in regards to uh, making certain there were some standards set for independent schools around reporting of academic achievement, around servicing all students via IEPs, some metrics for independent schools around um, the ed quality standards. That bill um, was really never taken up after crossover in the Senate. Um, and now since then, there has been a lawsuit uh, from Mid-Vermont Christian uh, targeting some neighboring districts. Uh, it also was uh, Agency of Education and the Vermont Principals Association uh, in a suit. Um, and my sense is that that will, that will be destined for the Vermont Supreme Court and even possibly the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, and so I do think that the, it behooves the legislature to maybe try to get ahead of some of that. Um, we'll see what happens in the Senate. So I just, that's a bill that I haven't heard anyone really mention this year. It was talked a lot about last year, I think due to Ed funding and Act 127 and tax rates, that that's kind of been leading the conversation right now in the press. I do expect something to, to come of that bill possibly to this session. Um, and I'll continue to give you updates and send things out um, as, as I receive them. Any okay, questions? is there any questions for the uh, superintendent? The only other thing I'll just mention real quick, sorry, is that we still don't have a sense of who the finalists are for the secretary of that uh, and or when that's going to be announced by the governor. Uh, I know finalists were sent well over a month ago now um, and there still hasn't been any action taken, so. Stay tuned on that too. I'll let you know once I hear. Okay, if there's no further um, questions or comments for the superintendent, let's move on to the uh, business manager's report. You all have my report. It outlines what's happening in the business office during the month of January in addition to budgets. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone has on any of those reports. Does it mean the transportation figures are frozen? So that is um, for vocational transportation, what we can utilize for that. And it's also um, for special education. What does it mean that it's frozen? Uh, the I state sets the threshold. All right, is there any questions for Tara in regards to this? Uh, looks like busy January. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, then we'll move on to the policy committee update. Patrick, you want to take that or? <clears throat> um. Let's see, I'm trying to think, what did we go over this last one? Everything's been blending. Um, we went over the, uh, sorry, I got a crying baby in the background. <laughs> uh, the, uh, what was the specific of that policy name, Jamie, the, the uh, with drugs and alcohol pertaining to it? You Thank you. Anymore in front of me so we were going over uh which one is it the drug and alcohol testing that wasn't the one i was thinking of but no it, it uh, sorry I, I didn't know you had distractions in the background patrick I yeah no it's a little That's crazy that. here at the moment oh i'm sorry it, essentially we've got a policy uh, personnel policy in regards to ensuring that that we don't have faculty staff 
um, volunteers working with our kids who are under um, who are using alcohol or any other illegal substances at the workplace um, or school sponsored activities. And so we're currently uh, in the midst of revising that. The policy committee then was interested in meeting with our legal counsel to possibly pursue a new policy um, that essentially is a fitness for duty policy because um, there were some questions about um, employees could be using certain substances that could impact their ability um, to perform. Or um, not on duty as well. That we had some, yeah, we had some questions around that. So um, that's when, you know, I think you recommended, Jamie, that we, we have two different policies. Yeah, and so our legal counsel is gonna join that group on our January meeting, and we are meeting it from five to six now to just give us some additional time. The other policy that we're working on revising is um, our harassment in the workplace policy. Um, and so that one's under revision as well. And legal counsel is going to have a draft for us on around that um, and present that to the policy committee this month, too. And then the three policies you have in front of you tonight um, essentially our revised policies that you can take action on, the full board took action on these. Um, and it was mostly language cleanup. Um, and really what, what the policy committee is after is having our policies, all of our policies tended to have this introductory sentence around it is the policy of, they'd like to get right to the policy <coughs> statement. Um, and so that introductory sentence you'll see in all these policies has been removed. Um, kind of redundant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. But that that's still needs action on by each board in order to do that. And these are warned uh, to be able to yep. revise to uh, adopt them. Well, they're already adopted. You're just you're motioning to approve the revisions. Oh, okay. Great. These are already all on our books. They're just okay. the revised policies. Okay. Um, well, and I look for a motion to adopt the revisions to, um, I don't know if we can do it as a slate, and we need, uh, yep. do, uh, a motion to adopt the revisions for the slate of policies, uh, the uh, substitutes, the drug and alcohol testing for transportation employees, and the tobacco pro prohibition. prohibition. I don't know if that's I saw that. Okay. Second. All right. Moved by Bill. Seconded by Robert. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Great. So moved. Okay. Uh, great. So uh, the endowment committee met on December fifteenth. Um, and uh, we, they went over um, the draft investment policy um, that uh, has, that Bill had uh, presented. Um, this document will be used with our financial advisor to inform of our investment strategy. Um, there was some uh, additional. Um, Corrections to make uh, some sections a little more clearly defined, so that that part we that is not ready to bring to the full board, but that is what we one of the things that we discussed. Um, we uh, the other things that we were going to bring to the board we actually um, cannot now because we had discussed. Uh, bring to the board about moving a CD into a higher yielding CD, um, but the language of of it is that we uh, it was specific and unfortunately that CD is no longer available. So um, we will go back and look at that again and bring that to the board. Um, and um, I don't know. Did everybody get a copy of the? Um, did this get sent out to the whole board? Last, Last time it was in. No, we said the notes would, would be taken, taken up by that. <laughs> but moving forward, if you want the committee notes in, you can. 
Yeah, yeah, I think either or had to put them, them in because she wanted us to adopt them. them. Remember, we said right, it. Right, but I thought it might be beneficial as happy to do that to, uh, for everybody just to be able to read and keep up on yep. what the committee is is doing. Um, uh, also, uh, we'll be uh, working with uh, Jamie and our lawyer to talk about uh, getting uh, one of our. Um, Endowment language has changed, so we'll be moving forward uh, with that. None of this is, uh, you as the full board will approve all of this before any action is taken place. I just kind of wanted to uh, let you guys know that we are moving forward, and uh, we actually have an, uh, another meeting um, Friday. So, yeah, I need to get that to you. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're fine. Good point. Right. So, we're Tuesday tomorrow. Right. Uh, so we thought we had some something to bring to you tonight uh, to vote on, but we do not. So well, it's, that's okay. It's I like it as a um, a report to the board uh, just to keep it moving forward. Okay. Uh, great. Is there any questions or comments on that? Otherwise, we'll move on to ten point one um, twenty two twenty five twenty two. <laughs> 24-25 announced tuition rate. So I sent out a revised memo today after a request that um, the worksheet was a little bit harder to follow than in the past, and I've just provided the memo. So we'll look at the memo. Parker, I sent that to, um, I think I sent that to the SU conference email. Yep, we got it. So. Okay. No, this is not the revised one? No, that's not. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Right. Right. Not, not, forgot, 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 forgot. No, 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 no. I, I took, took it from, from the board, board packet. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, 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 it says the same information, but it, the yeah, yeah. what what she provided just simplified the calculation to a little more of a layman's term, um, way to be able to view it. <laughs> yeah. So basically what happens is we take your overall projected expenditure budget that we looked at tonight, because that's the most recent budget as of today. We back, back out, out the expenditures that are not allowed, allowed to be included in your announced tuition, tuition rate, which is, rate, which is your assessment to special, to special education, education. It's, it's, it's secondary, secondary tuition, tuition, tuition that you pay. That you pay. Um, um, and then we and back, back out your offsetting your revenue, revenue, and that and gives us that new number of $1,811,510. We divide, divide that by that your projected enrollment for fiscal year 25, which is 106 students between the two buildings. And that, and that gives us gives a projected, projected announced tuition amount of $17,090. Then we're then allowed, allowed to, to add back that in to that, that calculation what you what pay you in long-term facilities. So, facility. so these, these are what your, what your bond, bond and lease payments, payments are. are. So we're allowed so just to add that back that. in. And we divide that number by your 106 projected enrollment, and that gives us an addition of $375. So that so gives that us gives a us total projected announced tuition, tuition rate for fiscal year 25 of $17,465, which is a 3% increase over your fiscal, over your fiscal year 23 announced tuition, tuition of $16,950. And now remind you, fiscal year 24, 23, and 22 are so chose to keep the same tuition rate. So you've been at $16,950 for the last three fiscal years. Okay, so FY24. It's the, it's the same, it just was not on this sheet. It's in the, it's first, in first, the first paragraph. paragraph. It's in the first paragraph. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's up your first paragraph, your first paragraph, paragraph fiscal year 24, 24 announced for Rochester Rochester Stockbridge with 1650. Okay. Um, and what is, is, is there some type of um, penalty that we need to be aware of by, by going too low or too high with, with the announced tuition? So, so in the, in the allowable, allowable tuition, tuition calculation, calculation that's, that's provided, provided by the agency, agency of education, education if you are 3% over or under, or under and we are a district, district that bills back, back, then we can, we can bill back additional, additional tuition, tuition or you have, or you have to refund, refund tuition. tuition. As an SU, we, we have not, not historically have done that, that since, since Jamie, Jamie and I have I been, been here. We have to bill back. Right. Yeah, it was definitely had been... Yeah, uh, not to bill back, um, but that it's just that you you could bill back or or ask for more is what is that's is that, there's no other like penalty or or, or okay. No, no. 
Well, unless we charge too much. That's what we get back. Then, we can have it back. then districts could ask, yeah. Would the district, like, so if we, if we said, oh yeah, 20,000 or something, exactly. they could say, once you all said and done, back. nope, that was too much. Yeah. You need to pay us back. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But, okay. I'm not worried about that. Hasn't been a worry because you guys have kept your tuition pretty flat. I mean, right. Sounds, sounds good to me. I, I think you should go up some. Maybe yeah. Like this recommendation it, makes sense. Yeah. Interest has gone up. The cost of living has gone up. Yeah. Okay. So would you like a motion? Yeah. yeah. Like a motion to uh, make a motion to adopt the new projected announced tuition of seventeen thousand four hundred sixty-five. Second. Second. The motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? No, and Patrick, you unmuted yourself. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're right for the vote. vote. Okay, okay, great. If there's uh, no dis no further discussion, then um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, unanimous. Yeah, so moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Great. Um, so. And is there any uh, new hires or new resignations? No. Okay, yes. good. <laughs> is there any public on for public comment? And is there a second page to this? Did I just, I, I, did that. I printed this out, I only printed one page. So here we go, I got the one over here. My printer, I'm having a very hard time with my printer, so I am very limited to what I can print. <laughs> Um, okay, okay, so, so our, our next, next meeting, uh, regular, regular meeting, is um, Monday, Monday, February 5th, 6 o'clock at the Rochester, Rochester campus. campus. But we'll, we'll be seeing everybody, everybody on Saturday, Saturday January, January 20th, 20th at, at 9, 9 yeah. in Rochester, Rochester for, for our, our board, board retreat. retreat. Okay. okay. Uh, is there any future agenda items that we need to bring up at this time? Okay, well, if you come up with any uh, over the course of the next month, please email me and, or Jamie. Okay, I'll look for a motion to adjourn if there's no further business. So moved. Second. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. Is the motion? Oh, oh yes, JC. No, no, that was a mistake. Was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, thank, thank you, guys. You guys.